Welcome back to the channel guys. Today is going to be an interesting video. We're going to talk about probably two of the most fish catching baits of all time being the jig and the Texas rig. These two baits right here probably account for more bass being caught every year because of the variety of different baits and ways you can fish each of these. Uh, but today we're going to break down when you should select a jig, when you should select a Texas rig, because there's a time and a place for each one. Um, and honestly, some of them will actually catch you less fish if you choose the wrong one in those given scenarios. So today we're going to break down all those different scenarios and how I like to choose between a Texas rig and a jig when I'm out there fishing. All right. So for starters, breaking down what we're actually going to talk about today here, um, I am not going to get into detail on the Texas rig of like, like I just mentioned, there's a million ways you can fish a Texas rig. So that's why it accounts for probably so many fish being caught. You could do a weightless Texas rig, Senko. You can do a 10 inch worm on a Texas rig, but trying not to compare the jig and the Texas rig are very, very similar when you put a crawfish trailer on these. So actually these two baits right here, this is a six cents bongo in 4K sunfish. And this is a six cents hybrid jig with a 4K sunfish bongo on there. So they're very similar when would you know which one to use? And is there a difference? Do you actually need to use one over the other in certain scenarios? And comparing straight creature baits to creature baits, because that's mostly what a jig is, there is a time and a place for each one. So that's what we're gonna be breaking down today. It doesn't have to be the Sixth Sense Bongo. It doesn't have to be the hybrid jig. It could be whatever your favorite jig is. It could be whatever your favorite trailer is, but more often than not, you're using a beaver or a brush hog or a, some type of a, a flapping trailer like this Bongo on a jig trailer, you can also fish that same bait on a Texas rig and it'll still perform. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today to keep it simple and a straightforward one-to-one -one comparison here. So there's a few things that I'll pay attention to when I'm trying to pick between the two. One is going to be size of the fish or size of the bite that I'm gonna be looking for. One is going to be the time of year. That's very important to me, probably more important than the size of the bite that I'm actually looking for. And then the last one is going to be the type of cover I'm fishing. That's also probably the most important. Um, starting off with the size of bite that I'm gonna be looking for, as this is probably the easiest to break down, more likely than not, if you are going to compare, this bait is bigger. A jig is just simply a bigger bait than a Texas rig because you have the skirt and everything combined here. So it just looks larger in the water. Usually that will lead to a bigger bite. Mo not because fish are more interested in a bigger bait, more that the smaller fish will not go after a bigger bait as often. I'm not saying you can't catch small fish on a jig. I've caught six inch bass on this exact jig right here. Uh, but more likely than not, if you're setting the hook on these exact same two baits, fishing at the exact same time, you're going to catch a bigger fish on the jig just because of the size of the bait. It's going to deter those small ones from biting this guy. Um, but if you're looking for numbers of fish, a Texas rig is a great place to start because it's so small and so easy for a fish to get it in their mouth. You'll catch a lot of fish that are more willing to go ahead and bite this guy right here. So it's really dependent upon what you're looking for. Your numbers are probably going to go down on a jig, but your size might go up. Your numbers will go up on the Texas rig, but your size might go down. I'm not saying that happens guaranteed one way or the other. Uh, it really just depends on what those fish are looking for. If you have a bunch of fish getting pounded on a jig because everyone's fishing that and you throw a Texas rig because it's just a little bit smaller, but conditions might call for the jig to get that bigger bite, you might actually get the bigger bite on the Texas rig because everybody else is already fishing the jig. So it's just something different, more finesse profile, uh, but still a similar presentation. So there isn't a correct answer to that every single time, but nine times out of 10, if I'm trying to do one or the other, numbers or size, size is gonna be the jig, numbers is gonna be the Texas rig. That's the way that I'm gonna break it down to start. Now, when we look at time of year, there are a couple of different factors that play in here. Number one, you're looking at size of fish again. So in the springtime, when pre-spawn, all those big fish are moving up shallow and getting on those laydowns and stuff like that, I'm gonna throw a jig most of the time because I'm gonna look for that bigger bite. I might only try and catch four to five fish in a day in the pre-spawn, even though there's hundreds of them up there. You could go throw this Texas rig and you'll catch a million males that are 12 inches long, 
but I could go throw this jig and I might only get four or five bites, but they might be four or five pound females every single time. So that's the way that I'm gonna look at it in the pre-spawn, um, but that's a time of year focus, not really a size, it is, the goal is a size outcome, but that's the time of year that I'm selecting that. Also, it depends on what your fish are really feeding on um, and the presentation you need. So when fish are really keyed on bluegills, this has a bigger, bulkier profile for a bluegill appearance. So post-spawn, when they're looking for um, those bluegill beds and spawning bluegills, I'll throw a jig, even if I'm not dragging it on the bottom, if I'm fishing as a swim jig or doing whatever, I'll look for fish that are more keyed on that bluegill profile because they're feeding on the bluegill spawn. In the pre-spawn, Water's a lot dirtier usually because you have runoff and stuff like that coming down into the water and it muddies up the water. You need a bigger profile for those fish to find it. So I'll use a jig. In the spawn time when those fish are actually on beds, they might not be able to fit this whole thing in their mouth or they might pick it up by the tail and move it. Even if you're not visually sight fishing for them, if you're pitching to lay downs, you might land on a bed if you land on a bed with a jig, they might grab it by the skirt, grab it by the tail, move it off the bed, you set the hook, you miss the fish. But you could throw this Texas rig and most likely they're gonna get that hook in their mouth because there's not much else they can grab there. So you have a better hookup ratio during the spawn using this. Same with during the summer, a lot of times the cover is gonna get very thick um, and those fish might be living in very heavy cover. So you might have to fish a Texas rig in those areas to get some more bites just because your bait will go through the cover easier. Um, so those are some of the selections time of year wise. And then lastly is going to be the actual cover that I'm fishing. Uh, so there's numerous different types of cover, but they're gonna excel in certain areas. So the Texas rig itself, if I'm ever fishing grass, almost always I will be using a Texas rig if I'm pitching it. If I'm using a swim jig, that's a different story. You can actually swim a swim jig through cover pretty well, and they make grass flipping jigs that flip through grass really well. More often than not though, the weed guard is gonna be your problem because of the way that that sticks up, you're gonna catch some grass on there and ruin a couple casts every once in a while because you're flipping it into the grass, you're bringing it up and it's getting stuck in the grass. So this is a much more slender profile. It'll fall through the grass really well and you'll get a lot more bites if you're pitching and flipping different types of grass, lily pads, stuff like that. That's when I'm gonna go with this guy. Uh, that's my number one choice for a Texas rig then. The other one, complete 180 this time, is rocks. If I'm offshore dragging a bait on rocks, I'm fishing riprap on a bank, I'm fishing something that's very big, chunky boulders, more likely than not, I'm gonna go with the jig because the jig has a much fatter head bigger bulkier appearance so it's not going to fall down in the cracks in the rocks and you're going to lose as many baits if you're fishing a texas rig because it goes through cover so well if there's a small crack in a rock and your bait's dragging and it falls in there that whole bait's going down in and then it's going to get pinned in the rock and you're going to end up losing that bait because it gets stuck in there too easy so grass stringy stuff everything like that i'm going to go texas rig Anytime I'm fishing big chunk rock and boulders and other cover like that, I'm gonna go with the jig. Another one that I'm really gonna almost always fish a jig is going to be dock fishing. It's just easier to skip a jig under a dock because it's all in one piece. So if I'm skipping the bait, I don't want my bait and weight flying apart through the air, everything like that. It's just easier to skip a bit jig under a dock and get it down there to where the fish are. The last piece of cover is going to be types of wood. So it could be laydowns, it could be bushes, it could be all different kinds of stuff like that. This is gonna depend on your scenario. So if you're fishing a single laydown, you have one laydown in the water, it's got a couple of branches sticking off of it, that's when you're gonna use some of your other deciding factors as time of year or size of bite on your jig or Texas rig because both will actually work very well in that scenario. However, there is a time of year, and I'm hoping this year it works out, I'd love to go do this video, when you get a ton of rain and all the bushes will flood up on the bank and all the water will get up in there and there's a lot of cover in the water that you can get hung up on, that's when I'm gonna to go to the Texas rig again because it will be easier to work it through all the limbs. If you make a bad cast, it comes out a little bit easier. This just has more stuff to get hung on those different branches and limbs as it's going down in the water. Uh, so that's when I'll go back to the Texas rig I'll put it on very heavy line and flip into very heavy cover with that bait to get some bigger bites doing that. Where a jig would still get a big bite, 
this would just get into the cover better where those fish are. So I'm hoping a couple of lakes this year we get a bunch of rain and they flood. Uh, not like dangerous flooding, but like enough that it pushes the water up on the bank and you can see what these fish do. They get up in there, heavy bushes, heavy laydowns with a ton of little scraggly tree branches and everything. And you can catch fish doing that. And it's very specific where they'll get. Uh, it's a video I'm hoping that we can get to this year and I'd be very excited to do so. Uh, if you want to get any of these baits, you can check out the link down below. Check out this video right here. If you want to see all about this jig and why it's one of my favorite jigs out there on the market, hit that subscribe button down below and thanks for watching.